Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Jenkins Boat Works. I am Chuck Jenkins. This video is our second in our Learn to Sail series. And so we're glad you're here. This time we're gonna concentrate on sailing terminology. Um, but I would also encourage you to go back and look at the first video which, uh, in which we concentrated on five basic knots you need to know how to tie. Uh, we will link that video at the end of this. And even if you did watch it, and even if you did take uh, a try at tying some of those knots, it, it's a good idea to, to practice. So get a length of line and uh, go back and watch that other video. It's relatively short, but try to practice tying some of those knots. You'll look a lot uh, a lot saltier if you can uh, be proficient with tying some of your knots. Today we're going to concentrate on terminology, sailing lingo, if you will. And the reason we're going to do that is because sailing could be very confusing. Sa uh, sailors have a uh, a language almost all their own, vocabulary that, unless you've been exposed to it, it may be very confusing. And so uh, if you're in a situation where you're out sailing and the, the skipper says, do this or that, and he's rambling off his, in his sailing lingo, you need to have some understanding what he's talking about. Uh, not only so that you can be a help or be better at sailing yourself, but uh, it could be actually dangerous if you don't understand. So we're going to talk about a, a lot of different sailing language, and I think that this is going to take a couple of videos. Uh, today we're going to concentrate on some vocabulary and maybe a little bit of origin of sailing phrases. Quite honestly, there's a lot of uh, things we say in everyday language that have a lot of nautical origination. Um, if somebody says, I, I felt like I was going to keel over, well, you know, that means they think they're going to fall down. But uh, a keel is the, the bottom most part on the boat. And if the boat is keel over, uh, that's likely not a good thing. Uh, you're either on your side or upside down. So um, there's a, lo a whole lot of, of phrases like that that we have in everyday languages. I find it really quite interesting. I did some research in the process of putting this together and I, I learned uh, some things I'd never heard of. By and large, that's a term we use all the time. Somebody says something is by and large, that means generally it's good on, on both ends or all together, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, sailing by and large means that you're either sailing by the wind or closer to the wind or large, which would be sails out and, and maybe more away from the wind. So if a boat is good by and large, that would mean that it can sail at, uh, efficiently at different points. So that was one that I didn't know had a nautical origination, but I, I found that interesting. So I hope you'll find all this interesting. The first thing we're gonna look at is what I call the A-list. Sailors have a tendency to put A in front of a lot of different words, a drift, a wash, a float, a ground. And I don't know exactly how that started, but the A generally means to or toward or give some direction to. If I say uh, go a beam, I mean I want you off to the side of the boat. So uh, I think some of this may have uh, been a collusion of language. Uh, the Spanish use a or a specifically means two. We'll look here at the A-list in a second. I'll show you more what I mean. Uh, thanks for being here and joining. I hope you enjoy this and uh, let's get going. So like I was saying, this is what I call my A-list. Um, a in Spanish is, is two. So if, I, if, if somebody says, venga a mi casa, that would mean, come to my house. Now, I don't know if uh, the Spanish uh, had any influence on some of this terminology, but I wouldn't at all be surprised because the Spanish Armada, uh, the Spain's great navy, uh, back in the old sailing days, uh, they were kind of directly uh, affronted to the, to the British who also had a fantastic navy, and so it would make sense that, that there could be some crossover of language. 
But it's amazing to me how many words that we use uh, just in sailing or even boating in general um, start with A. Aloft. That means up, high, or in the loft. Um, aloof. Now, this was one I learned. If somebody is aloof, it means they're kind of out there a little bit or uh, maybe distant. Um, actually, it, it, it's a word that came from luff, and it means to windward or out there, away from the wind or further to the wind, aloof. Um, not something you're going to commonly hear, but I thought it was interesting. A beam. The beam of the boat is the widest part of the hull or the, the, the boat itself. So if something is said to be a beam, that means it's aside or beside the, the largest part widest part of the boat, so it would be beside you. Abaft, well, aft or after, that's the, the rear part or the back part of the boat. So if somebody says, uh, go aft and pull that line, they mean go to the back of the boat. Abaft, I don't know, somebody threw a B in there because aft would not sound very good. So I don't, know, I don't know where that B came from, but abaft would be to the rear. A back. Have you ever heard somebody say, I was taken aback? In the old square rig days on the big sailing ships, if the wind came from the front and took the sail aback, it meant that it hit the front side of the sail. It was generally not a good thing. But, and you didn't try for that to happen, so it was largely a surprise. So if somebody's taken aback, they, they were surprised. But it has a nautical origin. A drift. The boat was adrift. It was just out there floating on its own, adrift. Away. I think this is interesting. Sailors talk about making way, underway, headway, wayward. If you're plotting out a course of some place you want to go, you would say, I'm heading for a waypoint, a, a, a particular uh position or, or destination that you have. So if you are underway or away, it means you have begun to make way. A wash. I uh, turtled a boat several years ago, completely flipped it upside down. And when I finally got it right, upright, I was full of water. The deck was a wash. A lee. A lee refers to to leeward or leeward. Uh, and, and that is away from the wind. And we're going to get into that a lot more here in a little bit. Um, but if, if the helmsman, the, the man on the tiller, is tells everybody on the crew, I'm going to put the tiller hard a lee, what he is saying is I am going to shove the tiller over to the lee side of the boat, away from the wind. About. Now that's a word we use every day, all day. In sailing uh, terminology, it means uh, to come through the wind. We're going to come about. Ahead. Well, that's a word we use every day. Go to the head, go to the front of the boat. Head also means bathroom or toilet. And the reason for that is that in the old sailing days, a lot of times they had some netting up in the front of the boat where uh, the sailors could get up there and work on the foresails. And so if they had to go to the bathroom, they'd just get up in that netting and, and go. So they went to the head. Um, a miss. Well, that's a word we use every day. Well, not a lot, but it, it means things aren't quite right. It means the same thing in sailing. A front, um, that just means forward. Arrears, he was arrears on his payment, on his truck payment. He was behind. After, after the boat, behind the boat, aft. So that it gets shortened. Around, you might say you were coming around if you were coming about. Ahoy! Just a greeting. Moving right along. 
We have a guy in the club who goes by the name Runaground. He has done that to a point where he got that nickname. Your boat is either a ground or it is a float. A four, again, not common, but it means to the forward. Away. There's an old song they sing, anchors away, my boys, anchors away. I always thought that meant to throw the anchor out or away from the boat. Well, that's not what it means. It means to weigh anchor or to lift it up or haul it up. Um, so I suppose anchors are so heavy that if you're trying to lift it up, you would feel like you were weighing it. Affix. Affix that line. Make it fast. What? Secure it. That means to secure it. Aboard. That's a pretty simple one. You're in the boat. It can also mean by the board. So if you got dismasted and the mast fell in the water, you might say that it was a board or by the board. A midship, that's just in the middle of the boat. A hull, if, if you said we're, we're riding a hull, that would mean we're riding out weather, maybe under bare poles, no sails are up, we're just trying to get through this storm, we're riding a hull. Abreast, another common word, but it's a nautical term, means beside or maybe a beam. We saw that one a minute ago. Avast, G mateys, means stop it. <laughs> so anyway, as you can see, there's, there's and, and there's hundreds more of these. The more I thought of them, the more I thought of them. Um, not all of these are terribly common, but you're gonna run into them and somebody will say it, and at least maybe you've had uh, been exposed to it to where you have some familiarity with it. I think that this is gonna take a couple of videos to get most of this terminology down, but I do wanna look at uh, just a picture of a simple boat for a second and uh, make some comments about parts of the boat, because this is extremely important as well. So this is going to be a view of our boat from above or aloft. If you climbed the mast and you were clear up here on the top of it, you would be aloft. And so this is our top view. So here's, here's our basic hull. The whole body of the boat is called the hull. We have the bow, which is in the front, the stern, which is in the rear. Most boats, uh, unless they're double-ended, have a, a, a transom or a board in the back that, that uh, you hang the rudder on, and usually your rudder has a, a tiller. This is what you use to steer. So tiller, rudder, transom, all in the stern or a stern. Uh, your mast on a four-and-a-half rigged boat will have... Uh, a sail attached to the mast and to the boom, and usually a triangle type affair. Fore and aft sail means that the sail is affixed so that the, that the sail is part of its forward, part of its back. A square rigged boat, like in the old sailing days, that would, that would be square rig. Now it might have a fore and aft sail on it, but for the most part it's not uh, called a fore and aft rig. Fore deck is forward. You might have an after deck back here. Uh, your sides of the boat are referred to as port on the left, starboard on the right. Now these actually uh, have a origination as well. Port used to be called larboard or ladder board. And in the old sailing days, when they'd come into port, they would try to uh, tie the boat up so that the left side was on the port side because there was generally a ladder that led down from the decks to where you could get ashore. Oh, there's another one, ashore. Um, starboard uh, is the right side 
if you're in the back looking forward. And I'll get to that again in a second. Uh, starboard uh, has morphed from steerboard. Uh, if you see any pictures of, of like the old Roman rowing ships, uh, they would have had, instead of having a, a rudder in the, in the stern, they had a steer board on the, on the right side. So then it was called the steer board side, which over the years turned into starboard. Now, larboard or ladder board sounds an awful lot like starboard. And I have to think at some point in some storm or some situation, a captain was yelling at the crew to do something on the larboard side. And the crew might have not been able to hear well, and they thought he said starboard. And at a point he said, no, the ladder board side, port side, port side. Well, sometime along in about the 18th century, the British Navy adopted port instead of larboard. And... The United States quickly followed that, and it's become very common to, to just call it port side. And I like it because it's four letters, and the left side is four letters, and that's an easy way to remember it. So you got your port and starboard, forward, aft, and your mast is your pole sticking up out of the boat, your boom. The beam is the widest part of the hull. So if something is a beam, it would be out here or out here, somewhere on the side, close to the middle of the boat or a midship. Uh, where you sit in like a little day sailor sailboat would be called the cockpit. You would have your seats, maybe a thwart. A thwart would go uh, crossways. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about position of the boat with relation to the wind. So in this drawing, I've got my wind coming from this side here. And so this is the windward side, or to the wind, or to weather. Or I suppose you could say aloof, but nobody uses that. Away from the wind, on the other side, is the leeward side. It's spelled leeward but it sounds like leeward, or the lee side. So when I was talking about the guy who was gonna take the tiller a lee, he was likely getting ready to turn the boat this way through the weather, through the wind, and come off on another tack going this way. He would have to throw the tiller hard a lee over to this side to push the rudder over here to throw the boat that direction. And I've really jumped ahead of myself, but that's why it's important to know which side is your windward side and which side is your leeward side. Uh, if there was another boat over here, he might be said to be in the lee, in our lee. If you're racing, you might want that boat in your lee because you're taking his wind. If he's over here, he would be said to be to windward of you. Boy, you get me rolling and I can't stop. But we're already about 15 minutes in, so I am going to stop. And we will have another video soon that... Uh, gets into some more detail about all of this and, and helps to further explain it. So thanks for joining us. Um, try to uh, re-watch this and, and we're going to put a couple of links in the description uh, where you can look at nautical originations and nautical terms and those kinds of things so you maybe you can do a little self-study on your own. So anyway, thanks for joining us and uh, we'll see you next time. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.